All right, this one's for all you G Fuel boofing, pre-workout snorting pro gamers out there. I've gone through the extensive and grueling work of testing all the best and lowest latency settings you should have enabled on an NVIDIA graphics card for competitive gaming using a 1000 FPS camera so we can finally put some widespread misconceptions to rest because believe it or not, I'd say the vast majority of gamers out there, and yes, that means you watching this video are likely using settings that not only give you higher latency, but a worse and more choppy gaming experience. But real quick, if you find this video helpful, please remember to drop a like, comment, share it with friends, or add it to your favorites for future reference. But enough of that, let's get into the charts, and there's four settings combinations I'll be testing today that are widely held as the best settings to use for various reasons. First, we have G-Sync plus V-Sync for no tearing. Then I'll be doing G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex for no tearing and lower latency. And then we have G-Sync plus a frame cap plus Reflex for what is below believed to have even lower latency. And then finally, we're gonna be taking a look at G-Sync plus no frame cap plus reflex for what should be in theory the absolute lowest latency possible. But should you actually do this? Well, let's find out by taking a look at three of the most popular competitive shooters and taking an average of three runs for each of the configurations, starting off with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022. And this is gonna be total system latency. So that's from the time a button gets clicked to something actually actually happening on the screen. And here you can see that actually the worst result so far is G-Sync plus V-Sync where it comes in at 47.5 milliseconds of total system latency, which is actually pretty bad. Then surprisingly next up, you have G-Sync plus 138 FPS frame cap plus reflex because do keep in mind, I'm doing this on a 144 Hertz monitor. So that's typically where you'd want to cap it. And that actually surprisingly gave me 45 milliseconds of total system latency. So not too much of an improvement. And and definitely goes against the advice that I've seen a lot of people giving online. Then next up, we have G-Sync plus no frame cap plus reflex, which actually gave us 35.8 milliseconds of latency. And I actually believe on this one, the reason why it wasn't the fastest is because, well, my GPU was being the bottleneck. So even though I was getting over 200 frames a second versus 138, Unfortunately, a higher GPU usage can lead to kind of a jam up in the GPU pipeline, making things take a little bit longer to reach your screen. So it goes to show you, it's not always better to have no frame cap. And on top of that, you could also have some bad frame pacing and you'll also have to deal with frame tearing. And then finally, in first we have G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex, which gave the lowest latency at 32 milliseconds. So that's actually pretty dang good considering you also won't be getting any tearing whatsoever. But next, taking a look at Apex Legends, and here you can see things do change up a little bit. So the worst result was G-Sync plus 138 FPS frame cap plus reflex at 29.5 milliseconds. Then the next best result was G-Sync plus V-Sync, strangely, at 26.6 milliseconds. Then G-Sync plus V-Sync plus reflex, which gave just 24 milliseconds of latency. And then finally, and first we have G-Sync plus no frame cap, plus reflex at just 20 milliseconds of total system latency. And here's a result where uncapping your frame rate will give you a slight advantage in terms of total system latency because this was a lot easier to run. So I was able to cap out the 300 FPS cap with relative ease using the RTX 4090, meaning that the GPU was not gonna be the bottleneck and would not add additional latency. Now, I do also wanna mention that reflex will typically always help your latency. However, if that's not an option, I do recommend using ultra low latency as that's very similar to reflex. However, it happens in the driver versus it happening in the game. So that's why typically reflex will be a little bit better than using ultra low latency. And then next up, we have Fortnite on DirectX 12 and coming in in last, we have G-Sync plus V-Sync giving us an astounding 53.7 milliseconds total system latency. Next is G-Sync plus 138 FPS frame cap plus reflex giving 36.3 milliseconds of latency. Next is G-Sync plus no frame cap plus reflex giving 28 milliseconds of latency. And then finally in first we have G-Sync plus V-Sync plus reflex giving us just 27 milliseconds a total system latency. So here's another result where it could be that maybe the 4090 isn't quite fast enough to fully give you a high enough frame rate to make it worth it to uncap your frame rate, at least in this title. And then taking a look at the three game average, we can see here that in last is G-Sync plus V-Sync. So you should definitely never be using this if you're gonna be doing any type of 
competitive gaming because without reflex or a frame cap, this will actually make VSync active almost all the time, meaning that yes, you will be getting a huge latency penalty for using VSync in 42.6 milliseconds total system latency is not good. Then next up at 36.9 milliseconds of total system latency, we have G-Sync plus a 138 FPS cap plus reflex. And honestly, this one's a little bit surprising. And I think a lot of people will find this surprising because there's been a lot of people out there telling you to use, and in fact, I've said this in the past, that using a frame cap is gonna be the best option. And while it is definitely better than G-Sync plus V-Sync, since you will have G-Sync active all the time versus having V-Sync active, since you will be capping your frame rate below where VSync would be active. Unfortunately, it is still far worse, at least in my test, versus the other two options, which next up we do have at 27.9 milliseconds of total system latency, G-Sync plus no frame cap plus reflex. And here's a situation where I think this could have been in first if the games I had tested had been a lot less GPU intensive, because if you can render 500 plus FPS and your GPU usage is like below 90%, you will definitely get lower latency by uncapping your frame rate. However, I don't think that's gonna be a good option for the majority of people because it's far more likely that your GPU will become the bottleneck when you uncap your frame rate. And so you will see results like this where you either don't really get much of a latency improvement or the latency can actually be even worse by uncapping your frame rate. And again, like I mentioned earlier, you're also gonna have to deal with frame tearing and bad frame pacing, meaning that actually by unlocking your frame rate, the vast majority of gamers will not only have a worse experience playing the game, but also have probably higher latency, making this definitely not the best idea unless you know for sure, again, that you can get many, many more frames by unlocking your frame rate. And then finally, in first, we have G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex, which shocked me, but alternatively, you can also do G-Sync plus V-Sync plus ultra low latency if Reflex is not an option. And again, this came in first at 27.6 milliseconds, so just barely faster than having no frame cap, at least in the majority of games. Although again, like you saw in Apex, it can be faster to not have a frame cap. So ultimately guys, I do think that G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex or ultra low latency if Reflex is not available is going to be the best option for the vast majority of gamers out there who will likely be GPU bottlenecked when unlocking their frame rate. Now, I do think that it's gonna be a good idea to go to your NVIDIA control panel, which I'm gonna do right now, and actually go over to your manage 3D settings. And here's what I think you should do. Under low latency, turn it to ultra and make sure that your vertical sync is also turned to on. Now in games that have reflex, you should go to program settings, add the specific game, and then under low latency mode, turn it to off. That way you'll ensure that reflex is being used instead of ultra low latency for the games that specifically support reflex and games that don't support reflex, you'll have ultra low latency enabled. So no matter what game you're playing, you'll be getting the best of both worlds when it comes to the image quality as well as the lowest latency that you can possibly get without having to deal with tearing or bad frame pacing. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, RuPro has you covered with their RuPro AK HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable, available in sizes ranging from 3 to 165 feet, and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K at 60 FPS or 4K at 120 FPS HDR10 video through its ultra thin, flexible, and durable housing, and it even supports eARC. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.